Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be exploring how to make image hotspots on your WordPress website. To do that, we'll be using the Image Hotspots widget, one of the widgets from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. With the Image Hotspots widget, you can add an image that will be overlaid with marked points, which visitors can hover over to get more information. That information can be something simple and straightforward like you see here, or you can make it more extensive. It's up to you and what you need for your site. In this tutorial, we'll be making a copy of one of these examples, this one to be exact. So you can see what options this widget has and how easy it is to work with. We'll be going step by step through everything so you'll get to know what options there are and how to use them, what kind of settings to make, and so on. Alright, to do that, let's head over to the back end. In the Elementor sidebar, search for image hotspots. There it is. Drag it over to the page. Okay, and this is what the widget looks like by default. There is a placeholder image and three pre-marked points on it, which are three items when you look at the options. And the icons used for these pre-marked spots are these little plus symbols. One is sort of tucked away here. Okay. Well, this is placeholder content. So the first thing we want to do is customize it. I'll begin by replacing the image. Click here to choose a new one. I have the one I want in my media library. Okay. Insert. There it is. Now we can see that my image is not centered by default and I want it to be. To fix that, there are a couple of different options I need to adjust. The one I already adjusted before filming is this. When you go to Edit Column, in the Layout tab, you'll have this Horizontal Align option. The drop-down offers several different settings, but I chose Center as I want my column element to be centered. However, that's not all. I need to set one more thing now that I uploaded my image. And that is, click on the image to open the widget options, then go to the advanced tab. Now, we won't be covering this tab in detail as it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our image hotspots widget. However, you should know that it has several useful options for responsiveness, positioning, entrance animations and more. And that I'm going to use the positioning options to help me center my image. So, in this section, I'll simply switch the width option to inline. And there, Elementor immediately moved my widget to correspond to the way I set it to be using the column settings. Alright, let's get back to the content tab. So, I have my image, and now I can start working on my hotspots. By default, there are three of them. Those are the three items. To add more, simply click on this Add Item button. However, I'm going to delete all but one item. Then we can go through its options as I customize it, and later I'll duplicate this one item that I finish as there are several settings that will be the same for all my hotspots. Okay, let's start. When we open an item, we can see there is a number of options within it. The topmost options are for customization. But before I take care of that, I want to move my pen. Right now, it's here in the corner, not super visible or overly connected to my image. And I want to change that. So, I'll skip down to the pin horizontal position option. The default setting is left, but you can move it to the center, which puts the hotspot pin here, or you can set it to the right. And now it's hidden behind the widget editing options. When I move away, we can see it in the top right corner. For my first pin, I'll select center. Then we have the pin vertical position option. The settings here are top, the default, middle, which puts the pin right in the middle of the element height, and finally there's bottom, which puts the pin here at the bottom edge of the element. For the setting here, I'll go back to using top. Of course, these two options don't cover all the regions of the image, which is why we also have two offset options. The first, Pin Vertical Offset, allows us to move the pin up or down. This allows us to fine-tune the vertical position. I'm going to set 130 pixels for this. That has put my pin here, near to but not quite at the top. Then we have the Pin Horizontal Offset option. With this one, we can move the hotspot pin left or right. As the value here, I'll set minus 181 pixels. And that has placed the pin right here. 
just to be clear, both the horizontal and the vertical offset options take negative as well as positive values. Alright, next we have the Fade Info Position option. It works in concert with the Info Display option from the Style tab, when the display is set to Fade In. You can also see that from this note below saying option will take effect for Fade option for Info Display. We'll take a look at the info display style option later, but for now, even without setting it, we can look at the effects of changing the setting in info position. In the default position, the bubble with information is displayed above the hotspot pin, at the top of it. So, if I switch the setting to top, we'll get the exact same thing. But if we set it to the right, then the information will be to the right of the pin. With bottom, the information will be placed under the pin. And finally, with left, the information will be shown to the left of the pin. I'm going to return the setting to default as I don't plan on using the fade in for my info display option. Okay, I've set my first pin where I want it to be, and we can see it more easily now. So I'll go back to the top of the item options and customize my pin. As I don't plan on having a subtitle, I'll erase this dummy text to remove it from my element. Now, if we look, the bubble has adjusted to fit only the title text. And speaking of the title text, I'm going to change it now. Simply type over the existing placeholder text, and voila, the pin has a new description. Another thing I want to do is change the default pin icon. You can do that by picking something from the icon library. There is an extensive collection for you to choose from. So, if you like something from here, simply click to select and go to insert and your new icon will appear in the same spot as the old one. Alternatively, you can upload a custom SVG icon. That is what I plan to do for my design, and I already have the icon I want in my media library. Select, and insert media. And there's my heart icon now. And since it's there, I can proceed to style it. This way, when I duplicate the items that represent the pins, I will have the style settings already taken care of. So let's pop over to the Style tab. The first section here will help us sort out our pin style. For starters, it contains the same pin field that we just saw for selecting a pin icon. The only difference is that if you select the pin icon here, that icon will be applied to all your hotspot items. It sounds easier, why am I not doing this, you may be wondering. Well, there are two things to keep in mind. First, if you select the pin within the item settings in the content tab, that setting carries more weight than the one you'd make here in the style tab. Which is also the reason why we can see the default plus symbol icon in the field, but the page clearly displays my heart icon. I set the heart in the item settings and they override the style settings. The second thing that played a role in my decision is the design. I plan on having slightly different icon pins for each hotspot item. And I can't do that if I set them all to be the same here. Okay, having said all that, I'll delete the icon pin from here so it doesn't cause any confusion. Perfect. Then we can check out the pin color option. It has this user-friendly color picker so you can easily set any color you like. This is what my icon looks like when I switch its color to white. However, the color I plan on using for my design is a warm orangish shade, so I'll set the hex code for that. Okay, there. It's harder to spot because it now matches the color tone of the image, but I'll fix that by giving it a background color. Go to Pin Holder Background Color and you can set anything you like as the pin background. Another important option is the pin size. Using the slider here, you can easily adjust the size of your pin icon. And the background will keep pace with the change. I'm going to set 18 pixels for my icon. There. Then, I can also adjust the pin holder size. That will change the background color coverage. I'm going to set 46 pixels for the value here. And now I have this lovely background that makes my pin look almost like a button. I just want to style it a bit further. And that involves setting a pin border radius. By increasing the value here, I can curve the corners of my square background. If I increase it enough, I can turn the background shape into a circle. I'm going to set 30 pixels for the radius. There. This is my finalized pin design. Next, we'll look at the options for styling the bubble that contains the pin information. 
And the first option here is the one I mentioned earlier when we were looking at the positioning of the info bubble. It's info display and its default setting is fade in. That has the bubble popping up on whichever side of the pin you set. And you can set which side it will be by picking the info position. I'll temporarily switch this to the right so I can show you a few of the other options in this section. So now my information bubble pops up to the right of the hotspot pin and it's pretty close to it. If I want to separate them a bit, I need to increase the offset. Let's see how things look now. The bubble is so far from the pin they're no longer touching. And if I decrease, the two get closer again. I want to find some sort of middle ground, so let me see. Okay, this will do. And with this type of look for the display for the information bubble, you can decide if you want to have the info with arrow or if you want to disable it. When we set this to no and look at the information bubble, it's just a little rectangle. There's no longer a little arrow shape sticking out of it to point to the pin. So that's one idea for a fade in type of info display. However, my design includes using the alternative, the reveal info display. And with that one, the information appears to roll out from the pin. Granted, it doesn't look its best right now, but I have the options right below that will let me fix it up. For one, there's the info background color, where we can change the color of the information bubble itself. If I set something as an example, there, this is what the color change might look like. I do want something different, and as I have a specific color in mind, I'll enter the hex code for it. There it is, a dark green to match part of my image palette. Next, there's the info padding option. This one will be most useful to me right now, as it creates space around the information. It can adjust the size of the info bubble. This means I can use the padding option to make my info text more visible. If I simply increase all sides evenly, then the whole bubble will grow correspondingly. However, I don't want that. So I'll clear this setting, click here to delink the field, and then I can enter different values for different sides of the info text. And those will be 11 pixels at the top, 30 pixels on the right, 12 at the bottom, and 62 on the left. And let's see what effect that has had on my bubble. Excellent. The info text is completely and clearly visible and the bubble has its neat rectangular shape that aligns with the height of the pin icon background. We also have the option to add an info border radius that would soften the corners of our info text bubble. We can see how an increase in value has moved the bubble shape from rectangular towards oval. I do want to keep this, but I need even more curvature to achieve my plan design. I'll increase this to 30 pixels. Okay. And now if we look, our info bubble unfolds neatly from the pin icon, matching its height and radius neatly. So that's it for the info style section. Moving on to the info title style section. This is where we can adjust the look of the title text within the information bubble. The options here include the title tag where we can pick any of the drop down settings to replace the tag for the title. I'm happy to keep the default H5 so this is what my title text looks like. Then we have the title color with this familiar color picker. For my title text I'll set white. It contrasts well and looks good against my dark info bubble background. Following that we have the title typography settings. They include a number of different options for adjusting the text. There is the font family where we can choose a font from hundreds of available ones. Then font size for changing the size of the title text. You can use the slider or type in a value. I'm going to set 17 pixels for mine. And this is what it looks like now. There is also the font weight with a comprehensive selection of weight settings you can pick from this drop down. The option to transform the text to uppercase, lowercase or make it capitalized. We also have the style option for turning the text, for example, italic. The decoration option for adding a line under, over or through the text. Finally, there are the three options for adjusting typography spacing. The line height, letter spacing and word spacing options. Okay, those are all the options you get under typography. And the last option in this section is the title margin button. It serves to add more space under the title and in doing so separate it from the subtitle. 
However, this option won't do me much good as I erased my subtitle. So there's nothing here that I need to separate my title text from. And I already adjusted the spacing within the bubble using the info padding option earlier. And the same thing applies in my case if we look at the last section of the options here, the info subtitle style. As I don't have a subtitle, I don't need the options for styling it. But if I did, using the subtitle color option, I could change the color of the subtitle text. And using the subtitle typography, I could access all these different options that would let me adjust the look of my subtitle text. Alright, with that we covered all the style options you get with the image hotspots widget. The last tab, Advanced, has several useful options for responsiveness, positioning, entrance animations, and more. But since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to this widget, we won't be covering it in the tutorial. So we've seen the options, but my element is not actually finished. I have just one hotspot pin in the image when I actually want to have multiple ones. And if you recall from earlier in the video, I deliberately went over all the style options first before customizing the whole element. I did this so I can style the first pin, have it ready, and then simply duplicate it. That way I don't have to make all the same adjustments over and over again. But before I get on with that, a brief note about the two remaining option sections in this tab. They are something you get with every one of the key add-ons widgets. The developer tools contain an option you get with all of our widgets. If you switch it to yes, it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode, this light grey text. Then you can easily copy it for use elsewhere on your site. Alright, I'll switch this back. And under that, we have the help section. It contains links to various helpful resources, including a link to our help center, in case you need them. And that's all for the content tab. I'll go back to the general section. And now I'll simply go to this button icon and click on it to duplicate the first hotspot pin. Okay, we can see the second item in the options, but not on the page. That's because the duplicate has the same positioning settings as the original, so they overlap perfectly. I'm going to change that and make a few more copies while I'm at it. But since you've seen how all this works already, I'll just skip ahead. Alright, here we are. I now have 7 items in total, and they are all styled the same as the first one. I did make a few changes, of course. They have different types of text, they're in different places in the image, and I even used a variety of icons to differentiate each hotspot. So, this is my finished image hotspots element. Let me hit update to save my work. Now, this was just one idea of what you can do with this widget. For more ideas and design inspiration, you can check out the page we started from. This one with different examples of image hotspots. Whatever niche or topic you choose to address with your image hotspots, we are confident your visitors will be delighted to interact with it and become more engaged in your site. To wrap up, we hope you found this tutorial on the Image Hotspots widget helpful. If you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.